Hey, Curtis, what are we watching this week? This week, we're watching a movie that blends Star Wars with Alien, with Airplane, and Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> this week's movie is Spaceballs. All right, welcome back, listeners and viewers, to another week of you. Let's Talk About Flicks movie podcast where we take a theme and we run it into the ground over the course of a month uh, with four to five movies taking turns bringing a movie to the table. Uh, we kick off January 2022 with a new theme. Uh, this month's theme is Mel Brooks movies and I am one of your hosts Oz. And I am Curtis. And we are here to talk about a great film Curtis, I'll let you take over because I could just ramble on. Oh, that's, this, there's going to be a lot of rambling in this one. Oh, I can already yes. tell. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. And especially coming off of last month's theme of Hallmark-esque holiday movies, which is clearly out of our typical movie watching mm -hmm. bounds. We are, we are right in our wheelhouse with Mel Brooks and Spaceballs. What, yes, what is it there to say about <laughs> the glory that is Spaceballs. We we went we opted to go with this movie to kick off kick off January because we wanted to pivot as far away from uh, the Hallmark esque holiday theme as we could yes. from from one week yes. to the next, and we landed. Yes. One on... could say one could say this is this is like a galaxy far far away. From <laughs> one where we one, were. one could say that if one so desired. <laughs> <laughs> So unlike the last, unlike last month, where our character breakdown consisted of a man and a woman that were going to fall in love, and by a bunch of tertiary we, characters. Yes, we we have we've got a full roster yes. of characters in this film. Yes, I I, se um, I separated mine into good guys and bad guys. So fair <laughs> enough. That, that's how so. I have I have the characters in the good guy <laughs> list. We have yogurt, uh, played by the the great Mel Brooks, Lone mm -hmm. Star. Played by Bill Pullman <laughs> in one of his first ever roles. Yeah, yeah. Barf! Played by the one and only John Candy. Half man. He's a mog. Half man, half dog. <laughs> he's his own best friend. We have Princess Vespa, played by Daphne Zuniga. Dot Matrix, uh, a, a, a synthetic being, uh, mm -hmm. voiced by Joan Rivers. Yeah. And then we have King Roland, played by uh, Dick Van Patten. <laughs> and then our bad guys i put four down we have president scroob also played by mel brooks dark helmet played by canada's finest rick moranis colonel sanders played by oh i i his name is slipping my mind yeah. right now and pizza the hut uh, oh yeah <laughs> voiced by by dom deloise i'm, I'm looking up yeah. pizza the hut. george george pizza. weiner was colonel sanders <laughs> Pizza will send out for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a cast of characters we have there. Oh, it's such a great film. <laughs> such a great... I, I'm excited because this is... Uh, we hadn't seen any of the movies last month, of no, course. No, they were all um, first-time views. But, but, but I feel like a movie like Spaceballs falls into that realm of... Unless you're young. If you're a young listener, maybe you haven't... You haven't had the opportunity yet to expose yourself to space balls, but I feel that for people our age, you know, uh, you know, you've either already you've either seen space balls or you haven't. Yeah. You know, I, I feel that's where we're at. So I'm hoping that there's a few people out there listening or viewing that because um, we're going to spoil this, but it's you know, 40 years old. Yeah. So, okay. Well, and, and given that uh, this space balls um, was one of the first movies that I recall seeing in a movie theater. Oh, yeah. and, and, it, and of all places, it was in North Carolina. My family was visiting uh, really? one, of my, I, one of my aunts and uncles who live in the Winston-Salem area of North Carolina. And I was seven years old. Um, and we went down there. And I, I, I recall seeing Spaceballs in the movie theater. Probably a movie that was a little, <laughs> a little above my age at the time, given yeah, some of the yeah, content. I, but I, I remember yeah. enjoying it, just some of the sight gags and things like that. I mean, you saying that I have a seven-year-old, and so as I was watching this the other morning, I was thinking, could I watch this with him? Yeah. Uh, and probably not yet. Mm -hmm. Probably not yet. 
just because of language. There's a few drops in there. It is a PG rated film. Technically PG. However, they do, yeah. they do drop an F bomb towards the end. Yes. It's, and I read in the trivia that it's one of only just a couple of movies that have gotten away dropping an F bomb in a PG film. Um, and honestly, they, it didn't fit. They didn't need it there, but no, it, they, they did it, it just, I think the, just to do it. <laughs> Right, to see if they can get away with it, and and they did. Yeah, um, it was also that time so, in the mid '80s when uh, yeah, PG-13 was was still a new rating, and they were still kind of kind of figuring out the MPAA. Figuring out, yeah, c- trying to figure out what actually fits as PG-13. Yeah, um, and this movie is by far sweet and innocent enough to be PG. Yes, if it weren't for just a few dangling ver- words in there yeah. that that would today put it in PG-13 category, but back then. You know, when you've got this sized up to a movie like Gremlins, Mm -hmm. Gremlins certainly deserved a PG-13 rating, even though the language wasn't bad in Gremlins, but the the amount of violence was. And so, yeah, when you're weighing the two out, uh, definitely this was a, you know, PG movie compared to Gremlins. But, uh, you know, they've since figured out what PG-13 fits. And of course, now in our day and age, it's virtually anything yeah um (laughs) (laughs) everything's pg-13 we've got well yeah because we've got to cater to kids under 18 that can go see it because that's where our money's at that's where the money is gotta get kids in the seats so but speaking of money this movie knows all about money because it's (laughs) (laughs) there's a subplot on merchandising that merchandising merchandising so So. we (laughs) open space balls with a star wars-esque crawl like the the, the, the <laughs> <laughs> which immediately pokes fun at Star Wars movie in a galaxy very 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 far away, and yeah. kind of how seriously the the initial Star Wars movies took themselves. Right. Uh, so you immediately get a sense of just how playful this movie is going to be. After the crawl, we've got you know we've got your typical Star Wars opening where you've got a couple of spaceships flying through space. I had read somewhere <laughs> I don't remember where, and you may have read it too that. Originally, Mel Brooks toyed with the idea of just having, um, oh, was it space? Was it Spaceballs One? Was that the space, name of the Spaceball ship? One? Yes. Space. He it, he it toyed with the idea of having Spaceball One take an hour and a half to fly through, <laughs> and that was going to be the movie. <laughs> you know, it was just an hour and a half of crawling spaceship, um, which it already was like what it, like three minutes. It was it was a minute. Minute, it was an, it was a minute, minute and a half. Yeah. Minute and a half it long meant, sequence. It felt like three and a half minutes <laughs> of, but. of the ship just just slowly flying, <laughs> uh, for, you know, right to left on the screen. <laughs> yeah, no, no sound effects. Just no. ship in space yeah. and, 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 just, and just the the Jaws esque kind of bad guy music playing yes. underneath. Yes, it. <laughs> so, and then it, complete with a bumper sticker on the on yeah. the back of the ship. <laughs> we we break for no one. Yes. So. <laughs> Yeah, we jump right into it, and it very much is the opening of Star Wars. Yeah. Aside from the ship battle, we've got you know Spaceball One, um, you know after after something. Yes. So there, there are the the main plot of the movie. There are two there are two planets uh, in, in the movie that are kind of competing against one another. Planet right. Spaceball, which is the home of the bad guys, and Planet right. Druidia, which is Dru- which is the the good guys base. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Complete with complete with manufactured ozone system because they have their own oxygen. Uh, yeah, they they that's one of their chief exports is is canned air, canned airy air, airy air. air. <laughs> <laughs> so there we start on the deck of uh, of Spaceball One and Colonel Sanders, right. <laughs> who's kind of like the the ship's main officer. Yeah, is uh, is alerted there that they are approaching Planet Druidia. And and he chats with one of the uh, one one of the techs on on the deck right. there, and they uh, they're having a good conversation. You know, you're a really good space ball. And the, he and is the, a good space ball, and the guy's very Thank proud. You, sir. Yeah. <laughs> then Dark Helmet enters, uh, immediately breaks the fourth wall, just walks right up to the camera. <laughs> Dark Helmet, of course, is 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 a parody of Darth Vader from this from the right. Star Wars movies. Only that his helmet is quite literally three to four feet wide, three to four <laughs> right. feet tall. Has a retra- massive, a ret- retractable like, space or face it, mask. It it looks like the size of like a Minecraft head. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just it's just huge, or or like like a Funko Pop kind of. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So his, his faceplate goes up, and of course he's wearing his Rick Moranis glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love how whenever the whenever the whenever the mask is down, he's he's got this his deep James Earl Jones yeah, voice, yeah. <laughs> and then it pops up and he's Rick Moranis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I think he didn't. There wasn't any like like uh, audio trickery with that. That was just Rick Moranis. No, yeah, him ch- changing his him voice, just doing that. Yeah, yeah him just making his voice different. <laughs> so so they they let uh dark helmet know that they're approaching the planet and helmet's like well we need to alert the president and this same tech that colonel sanders was talking to was like i already did it and helmet immediately is like you, you went over you my went helmet. over my helmet <laughs> <laughs> and as i'm re-watching this you know for probably the 50th time i've seen this movie oh, in my yeah, life at, same, at least same here. the tech um, and I know in, in this in this podcast, we try to keep things PG, so I'm going to talk about things without explicitly talking about them. The tech responds in a way that I think most people would when getting threatened by someone who could take your life in a moment. He just goes, oh, S-word. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to like like begging or pleading like, like, uh, like right. in most just, movies. Yeah, setting the tone that yeah. he knows what's about to happen because he's seen, he's seen Dark Helmet do this enough. Yeah. And, and and he defends his throat as if, as if he's going to get choked out because in the Star Wars right. movies, Dark, Darth Vader would use the Force to choke someone, but instead he uses the the uh, uh, he uses the the what we will later find he's, out is yeah. the Schwartz, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to shoot him in the groin, right. And it hurts. Yes. Uh, because and, he just moans. Yeah. And I also love his reaction to it. As opposed to screaming in pain, right. he's just going, whoa, ooh, ah, ooh, <laughs> ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it, it hurts a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so he's not shrieking or anything. It's just, no. ooh, ooh, ah, ooh, ooh. Like you're walking across hot coals. <laughs> yeah, or he skinned, he skinned his knee yeah. or something. <laughs> Just the the reactions to these characters have throughout the movie is just so great. Oh, I know. Well, and it wouldn't work if the acting wasn't just so just on top of. It. I mean, the people they have doing this. Yeah, we were talking pre-show a little bit about other spoof movies, like yeah. a like a scary movie or a not another teen movie or whatever, in which you know occasionally you'll see somebody in those movies, but nobody in that movie, it, nobody in those type of spoofs are current now celebrities yeah they're either somebody that's had a career and they've worked their way down the list of, of yeah. stardom they're at, they're on the back somebody... they're on the back side or the or the very very front side exactly because i know chris evans is in one of those movies but chris evans wasn't anybody at that time yeah. on a ferris but, you know right and mm-hmm. so the movies you know but we're dealing with space balls is john candy is established rick moranis is established mel brooks John rivers obviously yeah. mel brooks is established like these are people that I mean, they know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. They are on top of it. They're acting. You just they they are they are the honors class of yeah. of what it, of spoof acting. And so everything in this movie is sold legitimately. Like Rick Moranis, his his character is just ridiculous. But he's he's acted his butt off for this. Yeah. Like it it's this is a serious role. And that's the only way these spoofs work is if they. Is if the actors playing the roles take them seriously? Yes, and that's that's just what makes it so much fun because they know they obviously know it's a goof. They're working with Mel Brooks, but it's still just it's it's they're just having so much fun making yeah. this movie. So uh, Sanders is is looking away as this other as this other uh, tech is his his groin is getting fried by the Schwartz, right? And Sanders just looks like he's going to throw up the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> And and then Helmet goes to talk to him, and and Sanders immediately covers his groin with his hands. Covers his groin, yeah. <laughs> uh, they go to look at, they go to check the radar, and they go over to uh, to Mister Radar. <laughs> well, first they go to Mister. <laughs> yeah, coffee. they go to Mister Coffee because I always I always drink coffee when I'm looking at right. radar. <laughs> right. Everybody knows Cause, that because <laughs> Dark, Dark Helmet didn't know what he was looking at, yeah. so he's got to cover. It. So he's he's drinking coffee out of a styrofoam cup <laughs> as he's as he as they then walk over to from Mr. Coffee to Mr. Radar and they see that they're closing in on, on planet Druidia. <laughs> right. So we got we got to let we got to let President Scrooge know. Yeah. And as they're looking at at uh, Mr. Radar, Sanders basically says the plot of the movie. And, oh, yeah. And then one of the one of the great initial fourth wall breaks, uh, Helmet 
turns directly to the camera and says, everybody got that? Because <laughs> right. Sanders basically says, like, yeah, we're, we're low right. on air and we need to take the air from Druidia and this is how right. we're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so... Just want to check with the audience to make sure that everybody knows what's going yes, to happen. Yes, like this is how you do exposition. Wink, wink. Oh, it's oh, and, it's just oh, ma- it's ma- ma- just, it's so... just ma- making everything explicit is is one of the great things I love. Mel and Mel Brooks is so great at it, but it really shines oh, yeah. in this movie. Just yeah. like you make you take the undertones and and you make them just explicit, just right there. Yes. Oh yeah, you lay it out, and yeah, there's no thought involved, and and, and, and just, have fun with it too. It's, it's, that's what I was gonna say. It's you just enjoy it. It's yeah. just having fun with it. Yeah, it's, as much as I love Marvel movies, for instance, you know, there's always initial dialogue scenes where they lay mm-hmm. out exposition, things, oh, yeah. things that motivate the characters, things that push the plot. You know, a little right. history about something, and in here, it's wink, wink. This is exactly yeah. what the movie <laughs> is going to be about. <laughs> right, right. You know. <laughs> And that's what the rest of the movie's about. Yeah, exactly. Um, They're not kidding around. <laughs> right. So there's there's no twists. There's no turns. They try to play twist out, but you see it a mile away. Yeah. Um, and it's not even a twist. It's just it's just it's just fun. This but 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 so it's it's fun. not supposed to be tricky. You know, it's it's you know, no. you know they want you to see it a mile away. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Uh, so we, cut to yeah, we cut to Planet Druidia. As you could you could take mm-hmm. this scene if you'd like. Uh, like, like I told you earlier, like, I don't have a ton of notes. So we go to Planet mm-hmm. Druidia and it is Princess Vespa's wedding day. And, I, and so we've got, um, she doesn't want to get married, <clears throat> but she understand. Well, she, she's, you know, King Roland is, it's your princess. She's got to get married. And so and you have to get you know, married to, to, to a prince. You got to get married to a prince. Uh huh. <laughs> like that's not going to come so, back. All right. And so, you know, you cut to the board and you know, the, like the church, the church, you know, changed the letterboard. And, you know, today's Prince Vespa and Prince Valium's wedding. Tomorrow, bingo. Tomorrow, bingo. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, we cut to, you know, and, and, and it's our one of our first, um, I would say, dated references, dated jokes. I know Valium is likely still a thing and out there, but mm. Prince Valium is a very sleepy prince. <laughs> Quite literally in, a sleepy prince. You know, uh, it's played by Jim J. Bullock of Hollywood Squares fame. Um, And so she's, you know, she's going to get married and she doesn't want to get married. And so she takes a hard right turn and she and Dot Matrix, off they go. They're going to, they're going to flee. She's not getting married to this guy. And uh, so this puts her in a spaceship, her Mercedes spaceship with the (laughs) license plate, spoiled brat. (laughs) And, And so now she's out in space. So she, she and Dot take off. Uh, kind of a fun exchange is, you know, as they're driving or as they're flying away, that um, Dot's talking to her, giving her some dialogue, and and she's not, you know, Pr- Princess Vespa's not responding at all. Well, she's <laughs> she takes off her her bun you know, headphones. Her, her, she's her pr- out Princess Leia esque yeah. hair buns, which are headphones. Exactly, because <laughs> she's our Princess Leia character in all this. The 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 tough and salty princess who could hold her own. But finds herself in peril. Mm-hmm. Cut, cut to we cut back to we cut to the a Winnebago flying in space, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is quite literally exactly what it sounds like. It's uh, a, yes, Winnebago it's a Winnebago with wings, uh, playing yep. Bon Jovi, and yep. with a bumper sticker that says "I heart Uranus." <laughs> <laughs> And we're oh. introduced to a character named Barf, played by the one and only John Candy, who's dancing yes. and 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 uh, eating eating uh, like like spoonfuls of dog food out of a, food. out of a bucket. Uh, as previously previously mentioned, Barf is half man, half dog, yep. which makes him a, a, mog. a mog. His <laughs> he's his own best friend. <laughs> Uh, Lone Star calls Barf up to uh, up to the to the cockpit. Lone Star played yep. by Bill Pullman again in an early early Bill Pullman role. Uh, I was reading reading trivia that uh, this role was initially offered to James Caan, yeah, who who who, uh, who could not because of uh, substance issues at the time uh, yes. f- fulfill the obligation here. So it went they went to Bill Pullman. They went to a newbie. <laughs> it's plan B. Yeah. If we can't get James Conn, we're going to get that guy from Cagney and Lacey episode. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is the mid-80s. I think it worked out well for Bill Pullman in the end, though. Yes, yes. This really did kickstart Bill Pullman's career. Yeah. And, yeah, and he's he's time. gone on to have a very, very solid acting oh, yeah. career. 
very much so. Mm-hmm. I think he's been president more times than anybody in the history yeah. of, <laughs> of television. <laughs> but yeah, he, uh, yeah, it, and and I, I mean, I'm fine with Bill Pullman. I mean, Bill Pullman is, of course, one half of the is that Bill Pullman or Bill Paxson, you know, confusion. But uh, but no, I've always been fine with Bill Pullman. He's he's, he's fine. He's there. Yeah, he's fine. He's, yeah does the role so they're getting right. they're getting a call uh, they put it up on video it's it's from Vinny the robot <laughs> right. which and, has which has some amazing makeup yeah it's like well I remember seeing this I probably watched it on VHS the first time and with the graininess of quality of a VHS tape it was easy to assume that there's facial prosthetics that makes him look metallic mm-hmm. but having watched it in high definition the other morning really is the first time I noticed like that's a paint job. Yeah, like, that's, that's all it is. That's, that's all just, it is. That's all just facial paint job. It's an excellent job because he looks he looks like Destro. Yeah, <laughs> and and there's like dimensions to his face and like angles yes. and things, but it's all yeah. it's all makeup. Uh, yep. And so they're talking, and, and Vinny's kind of an intermediary for the the the, the their big bad Pizza the right. Hut. Clearly a riff on <laughs> Star Wars Jabba the Hut. Yes, Quite... as Lone Star is to be our Han Solo. Yes, our Han Solo with a dash of Luke Skywalker as well. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah we got both roles there. Yeah. With with Barf being the Chewbacca-esque character. Right, yeah. So uh, they owe Pizza the Hut money, and Pizza, by the way, is, is quite literally just a giant <laughs> sentient <laughs> pile of pizza. <laughs> But, yeah, complete, complete with, with bubbling cheese. Yeah, just the drippiness. Yeah, and... he's, he's just disgusting and vo- yeah. voiced by by the perfect, the absolute perfect person for this for Dom DeLuise. Yes, yes. Oh, I love Dom DeLuise. Yeah, very underrated in my opinion. Yes, especially among our generation, I think. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And so that... yeah, it's it's. I mean, I would say the close. I wouldn't even say closest. There isn't comedy like this anymore. No. Um, you know, our, our big comedy heroes, you know, I feel in this, you know, this era are, are you know, your Judd Apatow type productions. Um, I'd say the closest we get is, uh, and I always butcher his name, um, but it's not spoof, but um, did uh, Thor Ragnarok. What Ta- we do Taika, Shadows. Taika Waititi. Yeah. Yeah, I I knew his name. Mm-hmm. I just didn't want to mispronounce yep. it, but I knew you knew it better. I would I would say, in, at least in in my experiences, his his filmography has the same. I feel like it's got the same level of fun mm-hmm. that we're dealing with here. Obviously, not spoof related, um, you know. But but it's just, that was a bygone era of your you know your Mel Brooks movies, your Naked Gun movies, mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, to where you know your 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 hot shots, your loaded weapon, uh, your national lampoon kind of stuff, but uh, yeah, just, but it's a bygone just era si- of comedy silly, that we silliness don't have much and, and, and writing yeah. and and I am I am I am such a big fan of just silly for silly sake and, and mm-hmm. not just in films. Oh, yeah. I'm talking like in in my personal and professional life. Like, right. like I, I I I found myself working into into like you know I, I advise a couple groups at at the school I work at, and one of them is a leadership group and. And I, and I encourage them. You're like, be silly. You're like, oh, it's, yeah. like, like, like silly means that you, you know, you're, you're letting your guard down. It, it's very welcoming. Yeah. You make yourself approachable and it's just fun. You know, embrace silliness. We, we need more well, silly and, in this know, world. And, and there's with the silliness that it, it empowers, like there's a, there's a level of confidence that comes with it too. You know, that if you can allow yourself to be silly, then, you know, as a secondary trait, you're confident enough in what you're doing mm-hmm. to relax. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's just not a lot of silliness in film, really in the world at all. Yeah. But, you know, that's that's for that's for our other podcast, Serious Conversations with Oz and Curtis. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let's talk about life. Yeah. <laughs> well, Oz here we're Curtis. talking about space balls. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it turns out if the scene concludes... Uh, they they Lodestar and Barf owe Pizza the Hut money, and with interest added in, they owe one million space bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Which I hope at some point that that's the currency that that runs, you know, like like the galaxy space bucks. I, space bucks. <laughs> one million space bucks, <laughs> and they buy you know, by so, tomorrow, yeah. or pizza right. is gonna send out for <laughs> you. <laughs> for you. <laughs> As Vinny takes a big bite of Pizza the Hut, so. Which cuts to, you know, now Lone Star and Barf, why are we going to come up with one million space bucks? 
Well, coincidentally, that's about the time that Spaceball One catches uh, Princess Vespa's, um, you know, in their catches catches her in their tractor beam. Yes, and so she's been now brought aboard Spaceball One. Well, they're they're being um, they're being the the tractor beam is being bringing them oh, towards right. Spaceball right, right. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, and Prince Roland gives call, or King Roland, I'm sorry, gives call to Lone Star. I need your help, Lone Star. You're, you got to go. See you're the, the only one that's close enough to help. Yeah. And so they negotiate a fee of one million space bucks, mm-hmm. <laughs> to, to which King Roland, so taken as back as his crown falls over his eyes, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> a million. So, <laughs> but he agrees. Okay, okay, okay. Go save her, and we'll pay you. So. Um, now we're on our adventure. Yes. In the meantime, Spaceball One, uh, you know, they're as as they're approaching Vespa's ship, they they want to get her attention and let her know that they're serious. So, so <laughs> right. so Helmet orders the gunner to to fire a couple of shots across her nose, <laughs> <laughs> and the shots are very very close to Vespa's ship. Yes. And it turns out it's because uh, Helmet yells at the gunner, "I told you to fire it across her nose, not up it." Nose, not not up it. And the gunner <laughs> turns around and is cross. <laughs> very cross-eyed. And with a very very <laughs> sincere voice like he's really he's really doing his he just goes I'm sorry sir i'm doing my best <laughs> <laughs> like he's really trying and and, right. and, uh, and <laughs> what was the gunner's name <laughs> helmet turns to sanders who, who made this who made this man a gunner it cuts to an officer on deck right also cross-eyed i did right. he's my cousin <laughs> and it turns out that uh, he's he's an a-hole he's yeah his name it's literally his last name is a-hole <laughs> i'm surrounded by a-holes and it turns out that every everyone on deck is a member literal member of the a-hole family except right. one there's one guy on the left side yeah, of the screen i did, I did notice yeah. that that he didn't raise his hand yeah he asks how, how many of you are a-holes anyhow and everybody but one stands up right even people of color raise their yes, hand. They're, they're, they're all, all members. They're all in the a hole family. <laughs> yes, and I think that that in a way speaks to. And this is our turning towards our let's let's talk about life podcast. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that there are a lot of a holes out there. And, yes, there are. And, and, and a holeness does not discriminate based on color no, or, no. or sex or creed. <laughs> no, even you can be an a hole. Yes, and you don't even have to be cross eyed for or it. have a cousin. <laughs> 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 Keep firing, a holes. <laughs> and so, uh, Lone Star and Barf they they make an emergency landing. So they they dock on top of Vespa's uh, spaceship, which is just a two seater. Yeah, it's a coupe. <laughs> <laughs> and Barf comes down and uh, introduces himself, which I got a kick out of it because they're out in space. There's no like he just it's just barf. Yeah, the same barf that was in the Winnebago mm-hmm. is now standing on in space. <laughs> yes, yeah. There's no helmet. No, 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 no vacuum no, of space. No emptiness. Right. No, no he's space. Just, he's he's just, just there. Whatever. Yeah. Just go with it. And so yeah, and he pops in and you know introduces himself and tells of the story. Come with me and you know only take what's necessary. So well, I got to take my the princess's matching luggage. Yes. So. Cut to, uh, you know, climbing the ladder. <clears throat> you got Vespa on top. You got you got Dot uh, up ahead, and you know you've got Barf carrying all of all of her luggage. To which Dot's like, <laughs> "Quit looking up my can." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> and so they get on the they get on the ship now. So they've saved her. Yes. And uh, the spaceballs realize what's going on because they're in the meantime. Um, oh yeah. To 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 distract. <laughs> Spaceball one so that they wouldn't be picked up as they're docking with the ship. They had to jam yeah. the radar, <laughs> which they did by f- quite literally firing a canister of jam, a, gi- a giant jar of jam at their satellite at, at the radar. <laughs> which which the, the the jar of jam is so large yeah. that like well where where, where no is it on, on the Winnebago? It. Yeah. <laughs> Right, on the, but, but again, whatever. But you're not supposed to think about things like that in this no, movie. No, no, just just go with it. It's just the gag is funnier than the than the right. how. And yeah. so, so uh, cut to Michael Winslow, cut, yes, cut, who's the radar technician, doing all of his own sound effects. Yes, calls Sanders and Helmet over. Uh, goes through the the Michael Winslow esque sound effects. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and lost the the which. Uh, 
Go ahead. I lost the was it the the beeps, the bleeps, and the creeps. Or... <laughs> <laughs> right, and then tell shows us what they sound. Like. Yeah, <laughs> I did read in the trivia that by letting Michael Winslow do his own sound effects, it uh, like Mel Brooks said, it, it saved us like a hundred bucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's sound, sound like effects. That. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> by just letting him do his own. <laughs> And they realize as, as jam is is literally dripping down the radar right. screen that they've been jammed. Helmet tastes it in its raspberry, and only one man would dare give him the raspberry. Lone Star, Lone, as the cam Lone the Star. camera pushes into literally pushes into Helmet's face, which then right. no knocks, no him over. knocks him over. Yeah, knocks him over. <laughs> which indicates that Helmet and Lone Star have some kind of connection, some kind of history. Yes. Yeah. So we're back on the Winnebago as we've got we, we've got Lone Star at the front of the ship and Vespa at the back of the ship and they're both furious. Yes. Yelling at each other through the ship's intercom. Right. And he and and Lone Star's he's going to go back there. First they're just they're just sl slinging insults at their yes. counterpart uh, as well as Vespa is telling Dot everything that she thinks Lone Star is going to look like. As Lone Star is telling Barf everything that he thinks she's going to look like, uh, and then he's going to head back there. And he's going to he's going to have words with. He's going to let her know where she stands. What is he? I forget what's he call her. I know it's one of your favorite lines. <laughs> Horse face space dog. <laughs> <laughs> which I have my six year old now yelling, which is because I'm a great father. <laughs> you are a great father. Mm -hmm. So, and they they you know meet up, and of course instantly are taken aback at the beauty of one another. Yeah, j just for a quick beat, they kind of pause just for a quick second yeah. to look each other up, and then continue right. to sling insults at each other. Yeah. So it uh it, in th at this point um of course Spaceball One has now realized what's going on, and so now they're after the Winnebago. Yes. And there's only one way for the Winnebago to get away from Spaceball One. They they jump to hyper hyper jets. They got they it. put their hyper they jets on, so they're in hyperspace. Yeah. Right. Boom. And you get your star field as it's blowing yes. away. You know, very Star Wars-esque. And, uh, but so, Dark so, Helmet, he can't take this. They, they got to catch him. We got to catch him. We got to go to ludic way to get ludicrous speed. <laughs> right. Which everyone <laughs> gasps. <gasps> ludicrous speed. <laughs> as they shoot past them. And <laughs> I just love a Barf's like, Spaceball, what's gone plaid? <laughs> Uh, and I love the back and forth between Helmet and Sanders. Yeah. And sir, you, Sanders yells, sir, you better buckle up. Uh, buckle this. <laughs> Cancel the three ring circus. Secure the animals <laughs> in the zoo. <laughs> what are, what's the matter, Colonel Sanders? Chicken. This chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Just these great, silly, dumb lines. Right. Oh, yeah. It, it just, movies like this have got to be kind of hard to write, too. Mm -hmm. Um because you've got to, I mean, if you're going to establish you're making a spoof, you've got to provide spoof material all the time. Yeah. You can't start with a spoof and then go straight because you're, you're just so disjointed. So just the constant dropping of jokes, um, you know, you feel like, even though I'm sure Mel Brooks wrote this by himself, I mean, he's, he's got to, I think you've got to have influence. This feels like a writer's room type of project. Yeah, I know there um, were multiple writers on this. Mel Brooks was, of course, the lead. But um, yeah. the, the the guy who played the priest was one of the co-writers. Oh, okay. <laughs> he was funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Do you? Holy moly! <laughs> <laughs> and so... It's, yeah. Go ahead. So they so Spaceball 1 over, overshoots... Yes. <laughs> Overshoots um, Eagle 5, which is the technical name of the, oh, that's right. of the Winnebago. Yeah, Eagle 5. Eagle five. Um, Helmet uh, aboard Spaceball 1 orders Sanders to stop. We have to slow down. <laughs> to which Helmet <laughs> just yells back, BS! <laughs> 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 they pull the emergency, because there's an emergency break. <laughs> yeah oh yeah with a warning don't don't, don't, don't use, don't it, use or it else <laughs> so they pull the emergency rake uh break and of course helmet's momentum leads him crashing into the front of the ship right and, and just <laughs> which which is so fun because it's it's i mean obviously you know that they're not going to hurl a human being that way but yeah. it's the way he's you know hanging you know parallel with the ground yeah. because they're going <laughs> so fast flies head first. Then, yeah. right but it's so it's so obvious just this this you know unanimated doll they're just flagging yeah. across the scene <laughs> but that's part of the fun too but yeah and then you know crushes his, his helmet in yeah. and, <laughs> and he turns into rick moran yeah have we stopped yes sir we've stopped <laughs> good 
<laughs> Why don't we take a five minute break? Oh, um, so. so let's let's go away or let, let's let's turn from Spaceball and the Winnebago. Uh, in the meantime, we were introduced to uh, one of the yeah. other key characters in this movie yes. back on planet our, Spaceball. Yes. Uh, the, the, he's our he's, he's our the, the, he's our Palpatine yes, figure. Yes, exactly. He's he's the Palpatine esque President Scroob. Salute, <laughs> hail Scroob. We uh, we have a story we're not going to hash into yeah. here. But back when we <laughs> we were such jerks, <laughs> back when back when we were in college together, uh, you know we had a uh, we had our residence hall like like political go- governor election our, stu- yeah, student our, our, stu- yeah, our yeah. political. Yeah, residence hall like politics. Student council or whatever. Yeah. And so we had, you know, people that everybody, you know, your floor had representatives that went. I went a lot, but I didn't want any office, whatever. And so we had we had a, a, a female student who decided she wanted to be president. I think she probably ran unopposed. Long story short, she won. <laughs> she was, she was, this power went to her head. Like she was not a, a happy camper at all. Um, and very much, you know, again, you are, you know, you're like a, an 18, 19 year old residence hall president. Mm-hmm. Y- you've got no power. It is. It's the equivalent of like junior highs. It's a, student it's council. At, at best. <laughs> it's a bullet on a resume. Exactly. And so, uh, but no, she was, she was firm and fierce about this. And so <laughs> there was a, there's a group of us on our floor that would refer to her as president. I, her last name I'm going to leave out, but it it, 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 it sounded similar to to Scrooge. Yes, it was it was syllabic enough that yes. it, that it could be a, a nice trade in for Scrooge. And so whenever <laughs> we would go into the cafeteria and she was eating, we would obviously <laughs> we would stop. We and, would salute and her. Hail this <laughs> hail this president. <laughs> oh, we were jerks. It was fun. It was. It, she kind of deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> So, so we're so we're in we're in the president's office here on Planet yeah. Spaceball, and he's breathing right. in a can of per, Perry Air, which is canned air from right. from Druidia, from Druidia, and in their forest. Yeah, and he gets a call from Commander Zircon, who, who we see several <laughs> times throughout the movie, on on a yeah. wall monitor, giving an update on on what we've been discussing with Vespa in the Winnebago or the Spaceball one and all this. <clears throat> with her very 80s look with shoulder pads yeah. and short hair and very 80s look to this woman and and and, <clears throat> and then begins uh just a great sequence of gags here mm-hmm. they, oh they, yeah uh, you know well you got to come to the deck and we'll give you the full update well we can beam you there it'll be faster yeah but it works on star Scotty will do it. it works on star trek so they make an explicit yeah. <laughs> star trek joke right scotty beamed me was it twice yeah. or three times yesterday <laughs> it was wonderful <laughs> <laughs> So, so they beam the president to the deck, and it's on backwards, which means right. that his, 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 his head is 180 degrees pointing in the wrong direction. Right. <laughs> he realizes how big his butt is. Yes, <laughs> which he then scratches in front of right. everyone. It, it gets angry that no one told him how big his butt yes. was. Like he's the he's your like dictator esque president, and he's angry because nobody would tell him how big his butt was. <laughs> so they 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 beam him back, which then fixes right. it. And then, yes. and then, well, we could beam you back, sir. No, I'll just walk. Oh. And 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 the deck is literally next door. Literally next door. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's another ten feet away. Right. <laughs> so they give him his salute. Uh, there's twins there, twin blondes. Mm-hmm. They, yes. they they make a a what is now a very dated double mint gum reference. Uh, but, yes. Chew, chew your gum. <laughs> but it's still fun. Yeah, they're they're the double mint twins. Yeah. So that's our introduction to President Scroob, as well yes. as Planet Spaceball. So, at this, so go ahead. I say at this point uh, we're we're back in the Winnebago on Eagle Five, and uh, they're they've got some distance between themselves and Spaceball One, and then Oz, what what happens? Is this when they go see yogurt? They run out of gas. They run out of gas. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, oh yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so yeah, they run out of gas, which you know happens in space. Uh-huh. And so they <laughs> they go crash landing into um, obviously Tatooine. Yeah, uh, <laughs> basically, <laughs> they go crash landing into a uh, a desert planet, mm-hmm. um, and you know, and then they're they've got their Lawrence, actually Lawrence of Arabia theme songs mm-hmm. playing under the scene. 
as they're traversing the desert looking for water or oil or, <laughs> or what was Ve- what was Vespa looking for? She was room looking service. For she was looking for room, room service. service. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and so they they collapse in the desert and the Dinks save them. Yes. They are the Jawas. The Jawas of our yes. Film. <laughs> as they are they are humming the theme song to you know Bridge Over River Kwai. <laughs> Dink, 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 dink. <laughs> so um, they find them, they give them water, and they bring them back to uh, to Yogurt's place, which is our, a yet another Wizard of Oz type reference mm-hmm. that I feel we've been making quite often in this sh- in our in our show. But yeah, they get back to Yogurt's place, uh, which, like you said in the in the character reveal, you know, is is Mel Brooks again mm-hmm. um, play, playing playing our Yoda figure only colored gold and his name's yogurt and he's and he's on his knees yes <laughs> with the long cloak in front of him he's, he's just shuffling around on his knees for this for this part so we meet yogurt and mm. yogurt is uh um you know what what is yogurt and his dinks specialize in merchandising merchandising yes and, and I, I will pause for a moment before we go into this uh yeah mel, please do. mel brooks is is of jewish jewish faith and many of his yes. films take take many many gags about that i don't think oz or i i don't think either of us are are equipped given our background to to dive no. fully into into the nature and nuance of these jokes however no. it, it's it's clear examples of making fun of oneself and making yes. fun of what one is and who one is right um, yeah, leaning in, leaning into yeah, it as you said. Yeah, last just week. yeah, accepting what you are and who you are, and just having fun with it, and it and it completely works. Uh, unrelated to this movie, it reminds me a lot. There, there's a movie that came out several years ago called uh, uh, "She's Out of Out of My League" or "Out of Your League" mm-hmm. or whatever. It's got Jay Bershaw and Alice Eve. Anyway, long story short, there's a scene in here um, <clears throat> where there's a character named Stainer, um, and Stainer got his name. Because he had peed his pants once in junior high or something like that. But there's, it's actually a really touching scene. It applies here in a second. Because he's revealing to another character why his name is Stainer. And basically, uh, our lead character, you know, Jay, I can't remember his name in the movie, doesn't matter. Um, but he was telling him, hey, own it. You know, like, everybody's calling you Stainer to make fun of you. So he just adopted his own, adopted the nickname Stainer and basically took that power mm-hmm. away yeah. from those that were going to make fun of him. And I feel like, you know, Mel Brooks and a lot of, a lot of people do it anyway, but Mel Brooks definitely is leaning into that in a lot of his movies when he touches on his Jewish heritage by making fun of the things that people make fun of about the Jewish culture, yeah, you, you, which you, you, isn't you, fair, but... Yeah, you disarm people. You you yes, take you, you so, reclaim that you you t- you take that power away from someone you accept right. it and own it, right? And so that's what he's doing here is hey you know and there we we come up on a joke you know here a little bit later when they actually after this series of scenes where they actually uh, where Dark Helmet gets his hands on Princess Vespa and what they're threatening to do to her um, you know but but yeah this is definitely with the merchandising and the focus on money. Um, you know, it plays into that unfortunate stereotype, you know, with, with you know, the Jewish culture and blah, 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 blah. But this is Mel Brooks just being, hey, I'm going to beat you to the punch and just make fun of it myself. Yeah. So in addition to that, it also leans into the merchandising that Star Wars did and how, su- yes. how successful st- right. Star Wars and Lucasfilm and, and I don't know if it was Hasbro or whoever their partner was. What, Kenner. 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 They were, yeah, with, with all of the merchandise that came out of the initial Star mm-hmm. Wars movies. And right. and you're intru- they have a storefront in this layer, <laughs> and, and 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 yogurt introduces them to a handful of their products: the the lunch box, the breakfast cereal, right. the coloring, the coloring book, book, the coloring book, which is clearly a Transformers coloring book. Oh yeah, I, I mentioned that. I mentioned that later. Yeah, <laughs> and then of course Spaceballs, the flamethrower, which is right. quite literally a flamethrower. <laughs> right, kids love it. Yeah, they. Uh, I read in the trivia too that. When Mel Brooks finished the script, he invited George Lucas over to read it Mm -hmm. because he knew he was touching some sensitive areas with Star Wars and the power George Lucas had in the 80s between the Star Wars trilogy and the Raiders or the Indiana Jones movies. Like he was a big player in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And so Mel Brooks had talked to he showed him the script. He read it and George Lucas absolutely loved it. Full speed ahead. The only thing that he he worked out Mm -hmm. with Brooks was. Make the movie, make as much money as you want, but no merchandising ties to it because obviously that'd be tampering with you know trademarks of Star Wars, and so that was that. I 
I feel played into some of this scene here is all of this merchandising that they actually created and came up with and then, of course, could sell none of it. Yeah, the, the irony of that. <laughs> yeah. So we get all the merchandising. Uh, Yogurt starts training Lone Star in, mm -hmm. uh, in the ways of the Schwartz, which, again, is, is the stand-in for the Force. And, right. and there's a ring. So there's kind of a little MacGuffin in the movie here. And then the ring supposedly controls the force. And, yes. Uh, and one it's got an S on it. <laughs> yes, to indicate Schwartz for, for, for that. Um, there's one <laughs> hilarious scene where uh, Yogurt is training Lone Star. And they, they pick up this gigantic statue, which, <laughs> yeah. which then drops directly on Barf's foot, flattening it like a pancake. Yes. <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> and, oh, oh, God, John Candy just gives the best re reaction. <laughs> He's not just screaming in pain. He just gives these like funny sounds, like this "Wow, wow!" And... <laughs> he's physically throwing himself yeah. around. And of course, he's part dog too. So, like, right. it's a combination as to how a dog and a human would react if yes. a giant statue mm. crushed your foot. Yeah, and it does. It just, like you said, flattens it, yeah. like Road Runner style, like a pancake. Yes. <laughs> and then he just limps off, yeah. <laughs> off scene with this giant flattened foot. So jumping from there back to back to Spaceball One, and, and we'll mm -hmm. kind of reconnect when Spaceball when when they find the princess later here is when we'll kind of reconverge there as in our plot. Um, yep. So the in Spaceball One they're trying to track them, and so they go back over to Radar. Helmet is again drinking coffee from a styrofoam cup <laughs> through through his helmet this time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which gives a great like gurgling sound as it's going through. Yeah. What you imagine our wiring? Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> And this is one of my favorite scenes in the entire movie because they're trying to figure out like how do we how do we determine where they went, where where the Winnebago went, where the heroes oh. went, and right. well, let let's let's look at Spaceballs the movie. So Sanders calls <laughs> for for an aide to bring them a copy of Spaceballs the movie from Mister Rental. Which is <laughs> which is a movie rental station on the deck right. of Spaceball One, which of course f that... features primarily Mel Brooks titles. I did look at the top and bottom shelves as well, and it was like all sequels, yeah. like Friday the Thirteenth Part Two, and like and then like the top shelf and the bottom shelf just mirrored each other. They're all the same, but yeah, in the middle, front facing boxes are just nothing but Mel Brooks movies. Yeah, producers, <laughs> History of the World, Blazing Saddles, Young Frankenstein—they're all there. Yeah. And of course, there's there's Spaceballs the movie, and yeah. and and Helmet is kind of the audience stand-in, like 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 how right. we're still making it, you know. So again, to, how could we how could we watch it? Yeah, the the meta talk about like let's talk about the thing that we're talking about. <laughs> right. <And> so yeah. <laughs> they pop in the movie and they fast forward, and it, and of course it's the beginning of the movie that we've just watched, like the long yeah. spaceship crawl, the title card, the Star Wars as title card. Uh, yeah. they, they they show the scene <laughs> the they, ludicrous speed, yeah, they, they, <laughs> and then they eventually fast forward to a point where they are watching now. Yeah, and it now, has, now and it has the the, <laughs> it, the the with where the camera is positioned the infinite c c series yes. of the of themselves. You know, yes. like waving to watch their arms wave in the camera frame. Right. And this and this dialogue from Colonel Sanders totally plays up on yeah. like the who's on first. Yeah. <laughs> bit. <laughs> You're looking at now. <laughs> when when will then be now soon <laughs> oh it's 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 so brilliant and it's it it's again a, a great example of how of cl clearly this movie is a star wars spoof but it does so many other things that are not star wars oh, yeah. related and and yeah. the fourth wall breaks are just oh they're so perfect they really are i agree and i mean in, in all Mel Brooks movies which we'll be getting to the rest of this month they all are yeah. like he just knows exactly when to wink at the audience. Yeah. Uh, at this point, we go to Scrooge's bedroom, and, <laughs> and the twins are in where the he, bed. Where he's under, where he's under like spaceballs the bed. Sp yeah, sp yeah, spaceballs the bed sheet. <laughs> 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 and the wall monitor comes on, and it's the commanderette. And of course, they do the bit where the two blondes who are above the covers duck below right. and screw pops his head up with a copy of a book about Nixon up, upside down. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like, you know, the, the ship is approaching the planet, you know, we should, we need to comb the desert. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of my favorite scenes too. I love the comb the desert. So, scene. so we cut to the planet and there are literally <laughs> soldiers with gigantic ACE combs <laughs> right. combing the desert. 
Right, as as Dark Helmet's changed his apparel yeah. to more of a... <laughs> he's got a more of a khaki, like, safari yeah. look now. <laughs> with a giant Complete sa- with helmet safari <laughs> helmet that he can open and close. Right. <laughs> and so they, they yell to the soldiers, Have you found anything? Not a thing, sir. What about you? No, nothing yet, sir. And then, again, because in these movies, if to get away with making fun of other cultures, if you lean into making fun of yourself and what you are, right. you know, significantly yeah. more, they they cut to a scene and um, it's a it's a few it's a few black soldiers, African American soldiers, and instead of right. a full comb, they have a pick. You're dragging a pick through the yes. desert. And 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 they ask what their progress is, and they and the the soldier gives I'll I'll say a a a yeah. a, a response that we, we we ain't found s yes <laughs> in in a, a very very stereotypical manner, which yes. again Mel Brooks because you're spraying to all fields and making fun of everyone. Right, and and making Including fun of yourself, yourself more more most. than anyone else. That... And and I think it goes a lot further that he's the one, like not because he's the writer and director, mm-hmm. but he's in the movie making fun of himself. So he's not he's not written parts for somebody to make fun of someone. You know, it's you know, many ways he's physically, literally making fun of himself right there in person. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it really goes that extra mile. You know, much he's much better at it than like Carlos Mencia. Ever yeah, was. <laughs> That's, wasn't expecting a Carlos Mencia reference. And, and I and I, I do like at ending our ending our bit about this seat. I do like how there's not a reaction from Sanders or Helmet. No. So no. so I, I, you assume that they just go with it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> they they don't discipline for talk back or anything like that. They just oh, right. okay, nope, no, okay, you, you ain't found S word. <laughs> Keep coming. Yep. And so they so we. They they come they come across the lair they come across yogurt's lair mm-hmm. and Oz what happens after Helmet and his goons come across yogurt's lair yes we cut to a nighttime scene where everybody's sleeping and um, you know and Vespa hears hears her father King Roland calling for her he's out he's outside of yogurt's lair and he's he's just calling for her, you know Vespa you know <laughs> and so she's <laughs> you know and so she goes to investigate Daddy and you know. You know, basically, come and embrace me, Vespa. We're, I'm going to save you. We're going to go back. So, of course, she goes up and gives him a hug. And instantly, he, you know, that imagery melts away. And it's and it's Dark Helmet, to which Vespa then just faints. And, <laughs> and they load, load her. Fooled you! <laughs> <laughs> so, he, uh, so he loads her up and takes her away. So they've they've got Princess Vespa now. Um, so they can they've got the they've got what they need to uh, torture King Roland to get the oxygen from Druidia. Um, and so, uh, but yeah, we're we're aware. Um, prior to this, Vespa and Lone Star almost kiss, but yes. Dot's virgin mode <laughs> <That's> <laughs> starts right. bleaking. Um, it stops that before, it dead in its tracks, but now we're back on the chase. If so we got to get mm-hmm. Princess Vespa back, yep. Uh, so at this point, they're on Spaceball One, and or, yes. or, no, I, no, I, I take that back. They're on Planet Spaceball. We'll we'll, we'll cut. To yeah, their, they took her back to. They Planet took her back Spaceball. to Planet Spaceball, and they're in a surgical suite, <laughs> and they have Roland up on the wall monitor, and so. Right. Sanders and Helmet are uh, are shaking Roland down for the uh, the combination to the to Druidia's airlock. Right, we got to get in there. Yep, because they got a plan. Yep, and they have Vespa strapped to a stra- strapped to a table up at an angle, a very 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 Bond esque, you know, strap the good guy very to, to so. a table, and they're they're threatening to give Vespa back her old nose. <laughs> no! <laughs> and it's just like crooked, wretched... It's, it's, just, it's just this crag of a nose. Yeah. Like, <laughs> which I love the fact that it's like... like Prior to her to her rhinoplasty, like Princess Vespa is really going to pose for these headshots, yeah. <laughs> like like a before shot pr- prior right, prior right. to the corrective surgery that she had. It, it is. Yeah. It's 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 a, it's a nose that an old crone would have. Yeah, <laughs> well stated. <laughs> I think old crone did have. Yes. So, eventually, Roland relents and he gives the combination to the airlock, which is. One, two, one, three, two four, three, four, five. 
To which Helmet... An idiot. <laughs> to which Hel- Helmet cracks and he looks at the camera as he does it. <laughs> it's the stupidest combination ever. Only an idiot would have that on his luggage. <laughs> Sanders then t- goes to turn off the wall monitor and turns off the movie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Turns off everything except the audio. It's, and then they, they, the, the great meta talk about the movie production itself. You turned off the movie. Uh, they, so they, they end up turning everything back on. The president now enters. So Scroob is there. So all of the bad yeah. guys are together in one location for the first time. And they reveal what the combination to the airlock is. As to which, how does Scroob respond to that? <laughs> That's the same combination of my luggage. <laughs> to which Helmut and Sanders look at each other. <laughs> they just look at each other, yeah. They leave the room, the door closes on Helmut, just in a great silly little sight gag. <laughs> yeah. So Lone Star and Barf are now on their way. They're, they're, they're approaching Planet Spaceball for a rescue. Yes. They land on a, on a, on a platform. With a with a no parking sign there, <laughs> there's, there's two guards who are like, "You can't park here." <laughs> was okay. Was one of them? I can't remember the actor's name. It doesn't matter. But was the bigger one? Was he in the Burbs with Tom Hanks? I, I, I'll look it yeah, up while you're gone. I, I want to say so. I'm not 100 percent sure. He just he just had that voice to him. Yeah. So. Uh, Barf leans out of the of the Winnebago and flips them off and makes a kissy face to lure them on. So they they beat up the guards. <laughs> they beat up the guards and take take their uh, their outfits, well, complete with with butt plates. I love how in, in the guards in this movie, there it was it was him Rick Rick Dockerman. Nice, yeah, it was him. He was awesome Groundhog Day. That's right. That's right. So Barf and Lone Star are now incognito. Aboard Spaceball yeah. One in the in the prison area, looking for Vespa, uh, and and how how do how do they find Vespa Oz? <laughs> <laughs> well, they, before they start looking window to window, they hear somebody singing, you know, nobody no, and so they just investigate, and it's it's, it's Vespa. Vespa sitting there, with like a coffee mug, like she'd be dragging it across the bars. <laughs> Uh, she actually did her own lyrics there. I read that they gave her a shot to see if she wanted to do it, and uh, she's like, "Yeah, I could, I could try it." And so they went with it. She's That's a her singing. She's a bass. She's singing. <laughs> yeah, who would have known? <laughs> so, so they bust her out, and, they, and Dot's there too. So they get they get Dot yeah. out. So it's the four the four main heroes are all together again. And as, as they're making their way out, they run into the same two two guards they beat up, and they're in boxer <laughs> shorts and, and like tank tops. <laughs> Right. Those are the guys who stole our, stole our uniforms and beat the S word out of us too. <laughs> and they're only saying it to each yeah. other because there's no other yeah. guards yeah. around yeah. this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's six people in the frame yeah. and four of them were in a fight together, yeah. and yet they're still breaking down everything that yeah. just happened. <laughs> so they they uh, the, a big firefight ensues, ensues. So some other some other guards come up and they're trapped and um. <laughs> what what are the great dumb sight gags in the movie? Oh oh yeah, uh, where he pulls the pipes. Yeah, off the Barf wall. pulls these pipes off the wall that redirect the the bad guy shots back <laughs> right. at them. You know, four soldiers come and line up like single file yeah. next to each other. They each shoot. <laughs> Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> and I love the sound effect as it goes through this tube and redirects it. <laughs> boink, boink, <Yeah>. boink, boink. <laughs> <laughs> And they catch all four of them. Yep. The guy who shot it gets shot by his own laser. Yeah, one of them in the butt as he's trying to of run course. away. Of course, those that butt plate armor didn't help him. <laughs> and then it gives. Then he throws off a Wilhelm scream. Of course, as he yeah. Does. <laughs> <laughs> which is a which is a big Star Wars reference. Oh yeah, the, too. yeah, the I Wilhelm. Mean, of course, that that's that scream has been throughout cinema, but um, but yeah, it <laughs> shows up in Star Wars. Shows up in space. Of course. So the heroes are making their way down a hallway. There, there's shots all around them. They dive through this closing door, you know, a la Star Wars. Yeah. And, right. and we meet uh, a, a commander played by <laughs> Stephen Tobolowski of all yes. of all people. <laughs> Who's <that? laughs> Needle Nose Ned, Ned the Head. Yeah. Ned Ryerson. <laughs> and he go he starts monologuing to the heroes, who then turn around and <gasps> You idiots! You've captured their stunt doubles. <laughs> and it's quite literally they're stunt doubles. 
Yeah, they're stunt doubles. Including a, a man as Vespa with a mustache. And, right, <laughs> with a Hitler mustache. Yeah, and a, and a big uh, <laughs> big cigar hanging out of his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so again, another just me- great meta joke about yeah. movie making and about how yeah. aware the movie is that it's a movie. They're all lo- they're all looking at each other like, get a load of this. Yeah. <laughs> you believe it? <laughs> so it cuts to the real heroes uh, escaping on the landing platform, trying to get back into the Winnebago. Uh, yeah. The door is locked. The door gets fused by a gunshot. Um, Ves- Vespa is asked to hold off the guards, and one of the guards <laughs> shoots her hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sh- my hair! You shot my hair! <laughs> and so it, she goes all Princess Leia, and pew, 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 takes, <laughs> takes them all out. Love, There's like 12 of them. They crank up the, the sound effects when she does it. <laughs> Instead of like pew, 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 it's like boom, 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 boom. And, and she just right. mows them all down. <laughs> oh, I love this movie. So the, the heroes make their escape. They they, they, they get yeah. off Spaceball 1 intact. Uh, and now we're back aboard aboard uh, the ship, Spaceball 1. And mm-hmm. the president is there, and he's, he's running <laughs> across the ship. Because <laughs> if I walked, the movie would end. <laughs> <laughs> so it very self aware. Yeah, exactly. So all three main bad guys are there on the deck of the of Spaceball One of the yeah. ship. Helmet, Sanders, and Scroob. And and they're all above Druidia. So they're there. Yeah. And they use the password, they open the airlock and 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 the heroes are like, How are they gonna get the air out? And Oz, what happens well, to Spaceball One? Well, they flip the switch and Spaceball One transforms into a giant maid complete with vacuum cleaner <laughs> <laughs> looks like the statue of liberty with a vacuum cleaner yes. and she's and they are going to literally use the vacuum cleaner to suck the oxygen out of druidia which they do complete by sucking trees out by the root yep. all the snow is pulled off the mountains like it's it's you know it's sucking everything up um and king roland is you know, like a fish out of water, struggling to find air to breathe. Yes. And how how are our heroes going to stop this? Well, there's only one thing they can do, and that's for Lone Star to use the Schwartz. Use the Schwartz. So he uses the Schwartz to fl- flip the literal switch on the outside of the ship <laughs> to <laughs> <Right>. reverse. <laughs> right. Spaceball 1 is switched from suck to blow. <laughs> So all of the air returns back to planet Druidia. And <laughs> right where it came yes. from. The trees go back down in their holes. Yep. The snow goes back on its mountain. Roland is breathing, and, and Druidia oh, is safe. You. Just like that. Good thing for the Schwartz. Yep. <laughs> but then they've got to destroy Mega Maid. Otherwise, they'll just do it again. Yes. So the, the ship, the, the Winnebago, Eagle 5, they fly into the ear to find the brain area, because there has to be a self-destruct in the brain area. <laughs> I, I, I think in the late 80s, they did away with self-destruct features and vehicles. I know my car doesn't have one. But, <laughs> but yeah, there's a self-destruct yep. feature. So uh, they get in there and Lone Star proceeds on foot while the others remain in the ship. Uh, Lone Star <laughs> beats up a couple of bad guys. They, they right. pull a Star Trek. He sneaks up on one right. to give the Vulcan neck pinch. <laughs> he is in the wrong spot. Yeah, which the guard then then politely corrects yeah. him. <laughs> what about here? Oh no! no oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> more, more. <laughs> it collapses. Yeah. He takes out a couple more bad guys, uh, and then right before he's about to press the gigantic self destruct button on the wall, <laughs> right. that that says next to it, "Do not push unless you really mean it." <laughs> Who appears to confront Lone Star? Dark. Dark helmet. So we we get our we get our Luke helmet moment here, Oz. Yes, yes we do. So he shows up, and uh, you know they're gonna they're gonna have it out. Um, do they start? I don't, I don't remember. I know they end with with the Schwartz, but did they start with something else? They they start by by uh, engaging their we'll call them lightsabers. That's right. Oh, out of their out of their rings. Yes, yeah. out of their rings, which they position right above yeah. their groins. <laughs> Yep. yep. <laughs> so that's how they engage their lightsaber. I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. Let's see how well you handle it. <laughs> <laughs> and they they then proceed to have the classic Star Wars lightsaber 
or, or Schwartz right. Saber, if you want to call it, fight. <laughs> right. <laughs> they get them tangled yes. up. They kind of wind up together. As Dwight Schrute and Angela refer to it, they red vine. <laughs> That's right. I hate it when I get my Schwartz but, twisted. <laughs> but they get all tangled up so that they got to like, put, put your foot here. <laughs> like they're helping each other yeah. get their Schwartzes untangled. <laughs> Just put your foot up and push. <laughs> At one point, Helmet accidentally hits a crew member. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, like slices him across the chest. Yeah. Which, uh, I think he's got all like a Spaceballs the t-shirt. Yeah, it's just another great <laughs> me- meta fourth wall moment. Um, they At one point, their Schwartzes, they go tip to tip with the Schwartzes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as as <laughs> Melissa po- made sure that I referenced here. Make sure you get in your notes. They go tip to tip. Okay, we got it. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Thanks, Mel. Yeah. Uh, and at one point, uh, Lone Star eventually kind of overpowers Helmet. Yes. Uh, Helmet stops then to go to, to shake shake Lone Star's hand. You know, let's, let's make sure this is a fair fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what what happens when he shakes his hand, Oz? He t- takes the ring off his hand, a Schwartz ring, and, oh, my God, you idiot. <laughs> you, you fell for the oldest trick in the book. <laughs> <laughs> Evil will always win because good is dumb. <laughs> and then he goes to give the ring back to him. And again, like, okay, okay, I made bad on you. And it goes to give it back and then purposely drops it down the, in the floor grate. <laughs> <laughs> he's just he's just ribbing him like a like a like a classic like high school bully right oh yeah absolutely he's just messing with him and so uh then we get yogurt chirping in, in lone star's ear let you know like well, i don't have the schwartz you've always had the schwartz to where lone star's talking out loud to yeah him. he's not there but he's looking or he should be talking out loud to him and uh and and so he realizes the schwartz is in you so Knowing uh, Helmet is about to shoot a laser beam out of his short ring. <laughs> Say goodbye to your uh, two Lone... best friends. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the only place that he yeah. shoots them. And I don't mean uh, your pals so... at the Winnebago. <laughs> so Lone Star uses the shorts to summon over a shaving mirror. <laughs> which holds it, holds it by his crotch so that when the shot from Helmet it hits the mirror and ricochets back at it. Because <laughs> that mirror can deflect the power of, of, of the force that binds everything in the universe together. <laughs> it's, it can, it can. All it takes is a shaving mirror. So it hits helmet, in which he then, you know, loses his balance. He's fallen backwards and his giant helmet crashes into the self-destruct button. So now we've got, what, three minutes? Yep, the three-minute countdown. Lone Star makes it back to to the Winnebago and, and escapes pretty pretty I'll say pretty easily. We'll just we'll just leave yeah. it at that. We've taken down all the guards on the yeah. way. So so they make their way out. Um, <laughs> the, you you can see uh, or, uh, Sanders gives the gives the abandoned ship order to which yeah. to which you you then see like everybody's loading up the escape pods. There's cl- right. there's clowns running around everywhere. There, there's there's, there's okay. like chefs and like pizza guys. <laughs> It's a gorilla. Yeah. So, so they all they're making their way to their escape pods. There's a guy with a timpani drum in an escape oh, pod. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's a bear, the a pizza guy. So everybody gets to the escape pods except for the three main villains. Right. Scroob, Helmet, and Sanders. And eventually, um it's just just cutting to it. Like the the ship counts down. There's some other yeah. gags in there as well. <laughs> They throw in one final, like, goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. you. Know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was have a nice day, yes, I yeah. think it was. You know, right before self-destruct, have a nice day. <laughs> Thank you. The ship, as it's counting down, also goes, you know, eight, eight, oh, it's, eight, eight <laughs> seven, right. five. What about six? Just kidding. <laughs> so the, the ship itself is giving them a hard time. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, which obviously throws off the countdown timer, but it doesn't yeah. matter because it just picks up really <laughs> We took three extra seconds for this joke, but it's okay. So the heroes make their escape. Um, Mega Maid blows up a la the Death Star from Star Wars. Yes, yes. Uh, of course, they are they are in the, the head of Mega Maid, yes. which was made to look like the Statue of Liberty. So it goes careening off in space and makes a crash landing where? On, on, on uh, the seacoast of some kind of desert-looking planet. Right, right. Complete with the hand that was holding the vacuum. Which looks like the torch yes. from the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> the torch, yeah. Which you know cuts to our you know our another sci-fi reference, our Planet of the Apes moment, where 
you know, two apes, Cornelius and someone else come riding up on horseback, just like the famous end of Planet of the Apes, mm-hmm. where they realize they've been on, where Charlton Heston and crew realize they've been on Earth all along. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so these apes that have now taken over the planet, they ride up and, <laughs> like, oh, S word. <laughs> Space ball. They're crawling out. <laughs> <laughs> they're crawling out the nose of, of Lady Liberty, <laughs> and 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 that's the last you see of of the villains. Yep, that's the it. villain story arc has come to a close. So Lone Star and Barf return Vespa and Dot back to Druidia. Mm-hmm. They collect on their ransom. Well, so we think they collect yep. not their ransom, but their their reward money, um, and uh, and they ride off into the sunset because they've. Their job is complete. So we're led to believe that we're wrapping up our loose ends here. Uh, However, it's revealed that uh, Lone Star only took 248 space bucks. For for, for, for gas. (laughs) (laughs) When did they refuel? Yogurt probably gave it to them. Yogurt had. Well, they they, they could have fueled up maybe on uh, on, on, on Druidia. I'm just. No, I'm thinking when they crash landed in the desert. Oh, oh, yeah, Yogurt. I'm sure it was yeah, yogurt. Yogurt, had, yogurt. He's resource. They used space yeah. balls. The un- space, balls. space balls. The unleaded. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, we get a nice little a little kind of cut scene here before the before the final moment of the film, where Barf and Lone Star end up at a diner in space. Yeah. And if you look closely, you can see the Millennium Falcon parked at the diner yes. as well. I did see that. So they uh, they enter. Uh, the the diner here and and sit down and they <laughs> one of them orders this was it the the space soup and the other orders the space special yeah. you, you want the soup or the special Lone Star orders the soup Barf orders the special yeah. and as they're waiting <laughs> you see you you pick up on conversation down at the other end of of the uh, of the counter and there are are people there that look very suspiciously like the crew from the Nostromo in the first Alien movie, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> including... Well, one of them is... is actually yeah. <laughs> John Hurt right. himself, right. reprising his role as... I forget the name of his character, but uh, he's... he's uh, they're, they're making jokes, and uh, and he's he doubles over in pain, and an alien pops out of his stomach, just like from, <laughs> from the first Alien, to which John, John Hurt <laughs> <laughs> leans up and goes, Not again! <laughs> Not again. <laughs> to where we get a we we get a beautiful Michigan J Frog rendition yes. from the alien, complete with top hat and cane, the smallest top hat and cane <laughs> you've ever seen. But he has them, yep. and he gives us our "Hello, my baby, hello, my honey." <laughs> As he high steps across across the the, uh, the countertop and out of view. <laughs> of course, of course. In the meantime, Barf has changed his order to the soup because. Because the other, <laughs> the other guy had the special, <laughs> right? So we get an instant check, please. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so they're back aboard the ship, and they're they're flying away, and they're kind of like, "Why didn't you take the million space box and and right. all that?" And they're watching the news, Oz. And what what yeah. does the news reveal as they're watching it about pizza? I'm gonna I'm, about pizza. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. The pizza hut is. Uh, did he? He ate himself, didn't he? He ate himself to death. <laughs> <laughs> to death yeah so pizza the hut is now out of the picture so they don't owe the one million space bucks to pizza mm-hmm. the hut anymore. so they're free and clear <clears throat> yeah they're good to go um however you know barf gets hungry and yeah uh, lone star offers him a fortune cookie which yogurt had given him earlier that's right earlier in the movie yeah. open this one when, when you right. need it and so barf opens up the fortune cookie and yogurt himself appears yep mystical yogurt yep. Complete with gold fairy dust. Uh-huh. And it turns out that um, prior in the movie, um, Lone Star revealed that he had this medallion. He was an orphan. Yeah, was, was, yeah it, was right, it was right before he and Vespa kissed. Yeah. So he, he was an orphan. He never knew who his parents was. He was raised in a monastery, which kind of mm-hmm. explains his loner attitude. Yeah. However, no one in the universe could ever read what this medallion says. There was a medallion he was left right. with. And Yogurt had read it, and he reveals to Lone Star that Lone Star is a prince. His yes, his parents is. were prince a king Lone and queen, Star. and so Lone Star is a prince, which means which means Oz I'm a, means he can marry Princess Vespa, because she can only marry a prince. 
So they whip a big U-turn complete with tire marks <laughs> and, 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 out in space. And after p- pouring the liquid Schwartz into the emergency gas tank. Oh, that's tank. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, get, they, they get themselves back to Planet Druidia because she's about to marry Prince Volume yep. again. And on, on the, the sign outside the church, it says, take two. <laughs> <laughs> take two. Um, so uh, Valium says I do. Uh, and we get a, well, By the way, we get a great sequence from the priest as well. <laughs> We've gathered back again. <laughs> <laughs> He's so irritated to yeah. be there. <laughs> and Vespa and... Uh, Vespa and, and Roland are arguing with each other up there, and right. and he's and he gets the priest gets irritated with them. Um, <laughs> may I continue? It's like this is the king. This is the king of Druidia, yeah. the entire planet. The king and princess at the royal wedding. And the priest is getting he's getting fear. He's just getting angry. Yeah. <laughs> and then as they're about to proceed with with the and the bonds of holy matrimony. You you hear this this loud noise overhead to which the priest yells, yes. "Holy moly!" <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Lone Star and Barf come in. Lone Star is now decked out all. Oh, white. they're dressed he's, to the nines. Yeah, he he stops somewhere to get his royal outfit, <laughs> and uh, and he comes and stops the wedding. He objects to everything yes. that's going on. She's like, "What are you doing?" And he takes his medallion and this says, "I'm a real prince." <laughs> And so they can get married, and she she pushes Valium away, like literally pu- pushes him down. <laughs> yeah, he just falls yeah. over because he's tired. Yeah. So they walk up. Barf is standing between them. The prince asks, "Who are you, Barf? Your full name, Bartholomew?" As he says very very proudly, <laughs> very, <laughs> very John Candy esque, Bartholomew. Barf Bartholomew. <laughs> are you the one getting married? No. Like get over there. <laughs> <laughs> So now the priest is so angry. Yeah. He just he just go in the very short shot yeah. version. Yeah. Do you? Yes. Do you? Yes. Good. You're married. The kiss yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> to which they are now and married, that, and that pretty that's yeah. pretty much it. That's it. That's our yeah. movie. That's space that's balls. balls. Mel Brooks is space balls. Yep. Oh, I love. Space oh, what balls. a what a great movie. So. Oh, let's rate it. At this point in the show. Oz and I give our own unique rating to the film that we just watched and reviewed. Oz, how would you rate Mel Brooks' Spaceballs? We've been going crazy ratings all throughout, but I'm going to go, just just to get the message across, 10 out of 10. It doesn't matter what it is. I, this movie's a 10. It's fun. It's light. It's it's just enjoyable. It's nostalgic. It's it's just it's just fun. Yeah. I just love this movie. There's um, like When we get to the three, two, ones, I had to get real nitpicky. Yeah. Um, and, but it, it's just, it's just fun top to bottom. I know this movie's not for everybody. No movie is for everybody. Um, uh, but this movie is for me. This movie is for you. Um, and we hope if you're listening out there, this movie's for you. And if not, give it a shot. If you don't like it, that's okay. Cause humor is subjective. And, and this is just what I laugh at. I love this movie. I'm going to go with, I'm going to rate this as, uh, 96 movie rentals. Ooh, from Mr. From Rent- Mr. Rental. 96 <laughs> punches on the card from Mr. Rental. There you go. You are you are a top tier club yes. member. So uh awesome. Awesome. I just I'm so glad we did this to start the new yeah, year. It's just a great palate cleanser. Mm-hmm. For sure. <laughs> so we always close our show, folks, with the three two one where Oz and I each reveal three goods from the movie we watch. Two bads and one huzz. Oz, would you care to go first with your three goods? Shh. Sure, sure. My first good is just, there is just the full arsenal of comedy here. Yeah. You've got lowbrow comedy, slapstick, spoof, puns, juvenile, literal. I mean, it's it it's just shows how much of a comedy mastermind Mel Brooks yeah. is to, to work and produce and direct a script like this that's just got so many facets of comedy. It's not a one-trick pony. He's covered all the bases. Everything's funny. And if it's not, something will be funny later on, you know, like, and that's just the part of comedy. Not every joke's going to work, but you don't know what the good jokes are unless you've seen the bad jokes. And so, uh, but he covers it all. Just the full arsenal of comedy. Uh, My second good is just the continuous, but yet perfect breaking of the fourth wall. I love how the references, uh, that they are aware there's an audience in the seats watching this movie with them and they invite them along on this ride on multiple occasions. So breaking that fourth wall is my second one. And my third one 
just how much fun they're all having. Um, you know, they're all professional actors, but they all nail their spots. They're all having a great time. You could tell they're having a great time. I actually read in the trivia that Mel Brooks had said that in virtually all of his productions, he stays away from the cast outside of, of the actual work day. But he said with this one, just he, it was such a joy to work with these people that like he found them, he was eating lunch with them and he just spent time with these people when they weren't on set because of how much fun they all were having. So those are my three goods. How about you? My three goods. Um, I, I just, the merchandising bit is, it works on yeah. so many levels. Just, I mean, it, it even standalone. It, it's just hilarious how they're, it's promoting right. the movie and, and, um, again, just the, the, you can even broaden that to kind of similar to your fourth wall, uh, one selection mm-hmm. you had just like the meta talk about the movie, like, like, mm-hmm. like we turn the movie off. Let's where, yeah. where, how can we watch the movie when we're still making it? You know, like, and, and, and <laughs> or the, the slashing of the crew yeah. member, but like just the merchandising bit plays into that. Everything is merchandised. And it, and it also just yeah. goes so well with how well star Wars did with how they merchandise yeah. things and the profits that George Lucas still rakes in every day, even, oh even today gosh, yeah. from, from all the star Wars merchandising that's out there. So that's my first good. Uh, my second is um, Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis is just a, he's so great to me. He, he's my favorite part of Ghostbusters. Um, oh yeah. Oh, I love him in Ghostbusters by far. I agree. Um, and, and he just, every time he's on camera, something as great as this happens. I, I just, I just realized as I'm talking about Rick Moranis, we forgot one of the greatest little bits in the movie, a little cutaway. It doesn't add anything to the plot, but there's a sequence. Se- yep. There's a sequence where <laughs> it cuts back to him and he's in his own quarters. And he's he's playing with dolls of all of the characters, <laughs> and and he it complete you know, and he's like an eight year old just playing with the dolls no. you know, of of all the leads there, and and he takes the the dark helmet doll and he and he, psh, psh, he he hits the the, the Lone Star doll, psh, psh, he hits the the Barf doll, and then the Vespa doll is there, and oh, I I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Your helmet is so big. <laughs> to which Sanders just busts in. Well, you're needed, sir. Did you see anything? No, I didn't see you playing with your dolls again. Uh, Good. I, I, and I guess and, I'd read in the trick. Yeah, Mar- Mar- right. I think you're you were gonna about to go where I was yeah. going. Mar- Marinus right. improvised that entire scene. Mm-hmm. He did just yeah. get me some dolls that look like our characters, and I'll take care of the rest. He improvised the right. entire thing. And it's just brilliant. It doesn't do anything for the story or the plot, but it's just so brilliant. And I I love Mick, Rick Moranis. Um, yes. My my third good is uh, again just kind of leaning into what you are, just owning who you are. You know, some of the some of the jokes about culture and ethnicity and and race. Uh, again, Mel Brooks leans into the you know jokes about Judaism and Jewish people and Jewish culture and heritage. Um, but he does it in a way that's not demeaning. You know, it celebrates right. the culture. It points out some quirks that every culture, of course, has, but um, and stereotypes as well. But it, it, it is it is a celebration of the Jewish faith and culture while also having fun with it at the same time. And it extends to other cultures and backgrounds uh, as, as well. But it just you, you lean into what you are. You have fun with it. You, 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 re- you reclaim that power and dignity for yourself and who you are. So, Oz, what are your two bads? All right, nitpicky. Um, just because movies, it's impossible for a movie to transcend time, I feel. Um, there's always something that's going to happen in the future, culturally, that you just cannot prepare for because you're locked in when you are. Even if you're making a movie set in the future, like this one, you're still limited by what you know there. Um, and so because of that, there's, there's several jokes in the movie that just don't stand the test of time, which is fine. Um, again, I'm being nitpicky here. For instance, the double mint twins, uh, one point Vespa calls one 800 Druidia 800 numbers aren't a thing anymore. You know, um, you know, Prince volume being another (laughs) one, you know, uh, you know, dot matrix movie rentals. Yeah, exactly. I have that in the VHS collection, uh, you know, dot matrix. It's, it's a style of printer that really nobody uses anymore, but it made sense in the eighties. Even the line, what do we have a quiz in yeah. you know, like, <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, 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 it's delivered as a joke that made sense at the time. And it just, unless you're aware of that, you're not going to catch the joke, but 
with the entire rest of the movie being jokes, you know, it's few and far between that these happen. So that's my first bad, if there is one. My second one, and this one you kind of mentioned earlier, is um, out of all of the Spaceballs merchandising that they clearly made for the movie, um, the best they could do for a coloring book was just put Spaceballs <laughs> on the front of a Transformers coloring book. It's clear Optimus Prime is on there. Now, it, yes, Spaceball 1 did transform into Mega Maid, but it's like, oh, like, like it's so blatantly obvious that's a Transformers coloring book. I would have I would have got a kick out of they would have grabbed like a Star Wars coloring book and slapped space balls on top of yeah. it. But that was my other like bad. It's like okay, it's literally half a second shot of something <laughs> in the movie, you know, whatever. That they cut a corner on. Yeah. You, yeah, that you cut a corner on. My two bads. The first one, uh, I'll kinda kinda pick up a little bit of what you were going with there. Just the the story, it it almost rushed a little bit too much towards the end. Like they escape from planet Spaceball and then everyone's, you know, Scroob somehow got aboard Spaceball One and then all of a sudden everyone is right at planet Druidia. Like that, that right. all happened in, in like a couple of minutes. Um, you know, and prior to that, you know, it was um, kind of a road tripish movie, you know, like they're traveling through mm -hmm. space and um, getting to know each other along the way. And, and then all of a sudden they, they're from this one location to another across the galaxy. And it was just, it was a little convenient. Yeah. Again, I'm being super nitpicky here. Right. You know, there wasn't any more story to tell in between, like, the trip back. But it yeah. just, it was very quick. Uh, my other bad is, uh, and again, being very nitpicky here, Bill Pullman isn't oh. quite as charismatic in his performance as some of the others. And again, you could, this is just as much a testament to how good John Candy is, how good Rick Moranis is, how good Mel Brooks is, um, you know, it, how good Joan Rivers is. Um, yeah, you know, that Bill Pullman's performance doesn't quite match up just with the hilarity that the other characters do. He, his character is kind of the straight man in a lot of ways as well. Yeah. Has the, has I the agree. least jokes, the least humor, but just doesn't quite have the charisma of most of the other characters. So I got very early in Bill Pullman's career, mm -hmm. you know, before he was first, it's, I know it's his first lead. Yeah. So Bill Pullman's performance didn't quite do it for me, but again, being very right. nitpicky. Fair All enough. right. Now we each have our one, huh? Something that just kind of maybe All confused right. us or confounded us. Right. Um, this one I found very interesting. Uh, there is a novelization of this book called Spaceballs the Novel <laughs> or Spaceballs the Book, um, written by R.L. Stein. Um R.L. Stein and Mel Brooks partnered up and wrote the the novelization of it. R.L. Stein had was writing um, at that time. He was writing more. He had he had yet to start his his horror like Goosebumps uh, style books. He was writing under another name, and it was it Stein was the end. It doesn't matter what it was, but it, it essentially was R.L. Stein. Uh, he had at that time a very successful comedy magazine through Scholastic. Um, that had started in the mid 70s. So he was running pretty wild there, but he had yet to start the horror novelization or the horror, no horror novel, horror novels part of his career between Goosebumps and Fear Street, et cetera, et cetera. But I just, that was mine. I was looking into this and I was like, R.L. Stein wrote the novelization of this book. Um, but again, he was a comedy writer at the time. He was yet a horror writer. So that was my hunt. It just surprised me like R.L. Stein, huh? R.L. Stein's got ties to the Spaceballs world. How about you? Uh, again, I, I kind of struggled coming up with a huh for this one, just because the story is is purposely simple. Um, right. I kind of would it. How come no, no more Pizza the Hut? <laughs> I know, like they they clearly established him as a as a player early, yeah. and they put the they put the money into into his being yeah. there, and then suddenly I mean, just wasn't. I mean, there. He's a plot device, is what he is. Like they had yeah. they had to create something as a threat to the lead characters that would drive their actions to then agree right. to save Vespa. Uh, I would have loved more Pizza the Hut, just because. I mean, it was just a just such a hilarious character, and Dom DeLuise is yeah. so so funny. Even just more, f another phone call yeah. or two, or you know, something. halfway between. Hey, you got my money? Oh, we're on our way. Right. Right. Yeah, something like that would have been. But yeah, <laughs> no more pizza. Yeah, that's it. Oh, poor guy. So. <laughs> he ate himself to death. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that is Spaceballs. That is our 2022 January kickoff film. Um, 
I know I enjoyed it. Oh, I, I love Spaceballs. I was looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. One Very of those much. movies that really and, uh, shaped my sense of humor and even my sensibilities growing up as a kid. I could I could say that about myself as well. I watched a lot of movies growing up, a lot of 80s action, horror, etc. Um, but definitely there were comedies in the 80s that were not kid-friendly. So this was one of the few that was in that range where I could watch it. I did watch a lot of the not- Kid friendly '80s <laughs> comedies as well, but um, but the ones I felt like I was allowed to watch were Spaceballs, even the Naked Gun movies. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because they were they were fairly innocent and they were fun, uh, and so I really did enjoy. I watched a lot of Looney Tunes growing up too. My dad was a big fan, and so um, you know, it just still to this day I'm just tickled by that Michigan J Frog reference yeah. with the alien because I just it's just a fun cartoon to watch anyway, but. Uh, but yeah, so this is Spaceballs. Um, you know, we are, we'll be back next week with our next film. We're going to do, let's do Blazing Saddles next week. Let's do Blazing Saddles, Oz. So Blazing Saddles, we're going to, we're going to bite off the big one next yeah. week and, uh, and tiptoe around some of the obvious issues <laughs> with Blazing that, that Saddles. That Oz and I are simply just not equipped <laughs> to, to, no, to take no, head we'll on. Get us. Yeah, <laughs> that's all you need to know. But we but we respect the humor of it, and we will be respectful, of course, in our in our review of it. But yeah, we'll do Blazing Saddles next week. Um, you could catch us anywhere. We're you know social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, obviously, you'd be watching this on YouTube. So if you are, you know, click the like button, subscribe, review, comment, all the things that we tell you to do every week, and you have yet to do. So please start doing them. Comment and review because. Uh, we want to interact with everybody. So this is our chance to interact. So uh, do all those things you're supposed to do. You can find the links down below. And uh, I, I'm good. What do you got? Anything else? No, we just, we appreciate everybody hanging with us as we kind of get the show rolling and we're off into the new year. And yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to this, been looking forward to this, uh, this month for a while here, Oz. Mm-hmm. Very much so. Very much so. So now that we've got the Hallmark stuff out of the way, we can get back to the stuff that we really enjoy. So all right, well, for, you know, let's talk about flicks. I'm, I'm Curtis. And we will see you next Take week. Take care, folks. Have a great week.